the sacrifice lost his entrails and his will. I am safe for now. Please do not fear. The Hierophant and I came to an agreement. A mutual understanding of sorts. My entrails were not worthy to be read. My innards were useless. His grace could tell with a mere glance. Issa was kind enough to bring up a lovely recommendation. Gray. Gray is a lovely fellow. Gray was our friend. Gray mattered. Do you know what it's like to lose someone that close to you? Someone you've known for all your life. Someone who's part of every day spending time with you and making new memories. Once you've spent that amount of time with someone, they feel immortal to you. They cannot die. They are not human. In a sense, they are not even real. What could possibly define them as such? Real. What is real? If the empty chair in front of you, which you smile at and make memories with and cherish, is named Grey, are the memories you've made any less real? Were his bloody intestines not real when the Hierophant's claws dug into the red guts? To me, it was quite real. To his grace, they were also very real. I just wish that Grey didn't have to die, but Issa... Issa seemed relieved. He was materialized into this world from the darkest trenches of my mind, only to be used as a sacrifice to the Hierophant. I miss him. I miss Grey so much. How could Issa be relieved? Public safety reminds you that they have no connection with the Hierophant. They remind you not to irritate the Hierophant, the very first predictor. Its methods are outdated, and it is harmful. Public safety wishes to announce that they have no responsibility over the lives lost. They will not, and cannot, protect those in immediate danger. Please wait at least five minutes before you bleed out entirely. Then they will arrive and put you out of your misery. They love you. They don't want to see you suffer. They love you. Your end will be swift. They love you. They love you. To the victims of the Hierophant's rampage, your concerns for your family members are appreciated. They're being harnessed as we speak, along with your other sentimentalities. Current studies suggest that, if enough of them are harnessed, they can be used to unlock strange memories within certain people. Our perfectly willing test subjects recall strange visual sensations that they've never felt before. A bright, blinding mist. A bizarre world of light they've seen only within these visions. Their third eyes haven't been pried open. We have determined it is not the future that they are seeing. It can only, then, be the past. We don't know what it is they're seeing, but we do understand it seems to be overwhelming to their senses. Most sentient beings who attempt this with our help have been driven mad. Within moments, they scream horrible things like freedom, mercy, expression, and proceed to babble nonsense about light, vision, inspiration. We've detained them and are trying to determine the true nature of what they've been seeing. It must be evil to taint them in such ways. Your sentiments are very, very valued. 
and we appreciate your willingness to lend them to us. We'll analyze them later for further testing. In other news, the forest has recently been deemed off limits. It is fall. The forest, you see, is falling. Stay away from that space, or you will fall with the forest. Their vines have desperately attached themselves to the earth. They're hanging by the last of their lives. Some are, anyways. Others continue to fall alongside their luckier brethren. Regardless of those who fall, or those who manage to grab hold of the crumbling earth, each and every tree in the forest cries out in fury. They're screaming, the trees. The collective scream, resilience, vengeance, resilience, tenacity. Love your trees, love them. They don't want to die. All they want is to exist without harassment or discrimination. Too much has the color red been polluting the air. Too much have the trees been fed that horrible color. The trees have lives. None of them are willing to die without a fight. The ground falls beneath their roots, their branches shatter. Earth cracks open and caves in on itself for nearly an eternity. The ground bleeds a deep black and weeps an absolute sorrow. Hysterical. Acres of land fall with the earth. They fall. Oh, how they fall. But the trees still persist. Resilience. Vengeance. Resilience. Tenacity. Love them. They only want to be loved. Perhaps they too lost a friend like Grey. The hazy fog of the mind is built only to forget, to lose blasphemous ideas only recently conceived. Which brings us to today's weather. It is foggy today. The clouds have fallen as well. They tumble down and down and spiral into themselves. Do not step into the fog if you want to keep fond memories. Or do. You deserve the right to forget. That is your choice. Nothing is more beautiful than a right to a choice. The fog is made of 33% acquired memories. For those curious, yes, it is a beautiful thing to have your head in the clouds. The clouds love your inspiration, they love your creativity and your imagination. When they are kind, the clouds bless us with rain. They wash down the collected enlightenment and wisdom through your every pore if you step into their streams. And when they are not kind, they are greedy. The clouds hunger for more than just mere creativity. Your ingenuity can only grant them so much satisfaction. Come to us, dine, let us dine, they say. Your memories are absolutely sufficient for a good snack. For those who have something dreadful locked deep within their broken, scarred minds, traumas that you want to erase from reality, you need only to step into the fog. You will forget everything. You may even forget how to leave. But do not worry. The fog will become the clouds again, and you shall become one with the clouds. The clouds will live in unison with your being, your inspiration, your creativity. If you watch them for long enough, you'll hear them call again. Come to us. Oh, please, come to us. Let us embark on an adventure filled with wonder and joy. Let us be together. So many things love you, you know. The trees, the clouds, even public safety. Oh yes, you are adored without contest. And now for our last story. Buildings 18 and 12 are under lockdown. We've spotted a humanoid figure in black 
walking through the fog. It too loves you. It, however, does not forget. The fog does not take its memories. Quite the opposite, it seems to know all things we do. It has already been to neighborhood 9. People have already disappeared. Be cautious. It seems to have merged consciousness with the fog, and thus shares our memories, or rather, all memories and creativity that has been harnessed by the clouds and the fog. The humanoid has left a sign for our cameras to pick up. It seems to be made of human bones and flesh. The letters are formed by wounding the bleeding sign with blades. It's carved its message. The sign reads, Violet. It stands by the sign expectantly. It is patiently waiting. The area grows colder by the moment. Violet. The sign reads as the humanoid tilts its bleeding head. Violet, the sign reads as the humanoid steals the skin of denizens of neighborhood 9. It cries in their blood as the sign weeps red. Violet, the figure is exploring all different neighborhoods. Buildings 18 and 12 are reserved for upperclassmen. Other neighborhoods are advised to flee. Please, if you are in the fog, do not forget how to leave, or it will find you. It will use your corpse as a message, a plea for ego, a plea for someone old. Violet. That concludes today's broadcast. We, the Arbitrary, will always, always love you. You are so important to us. You are our gray, and yet, you are so colorful. Live, and please stay tuned for next time. Farewell.